Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network, back from Phoenix, where I was covering games three and four of the Western Conference semifinal series between the Nuggets and the Suns. Phoenix is beautiful, by the way. It's absolutely like, it was like, it was perfect. I thought it was going to be blistering, and it was 80 and perfect every day, and the food was great. Thumbs up for Phoenix. Big thumbs up for me for Phoenix. This is your best bets episode. Join me today to talk about it. We got Jay Money on Twitter at Jay Money is Money and Sean Little at Chicago Flow. We're going to have best bets for you. We'll break down what the sides are on this game, on the two games in the slate. Reminder of everything we talk about can be found in the award winning Action Network app. Best way for you to track your picks, up to the second information, download it right now. You get a green dot daily appearing on there, all sorts of cool stuff. I'm going to have a story about uh, the, the draft lottery coming up next week. I'll have a story in there about how that's going to wind up impacting markets. So make sure to check that out as well. The two games on the slate today, fellas, uh, for our Wednesday action. We record this on Tuesday morning. We got Knicks at home trying to stave off elimination down 3-1 to the Miami Heat. The Knicks are four-point favorites in this one, total 209 and a half. It's a three-point bump from where game four closed in Miami. And the Golden State Warriors... Oof, trying to avoid elimination down through one to the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron and the Lakers looking to be the first team to eliminate the Warriors in the Western Conference playoffs since 2014. That's crazy. It's been nine years since the Warriors lost a Western Conference playoff series. They missed the playoffs twice in that span, but... Uh, absolutely crazy. The Warriors are seven point favorites in this one. Opened at five, got hammered. It's already up to Warriors minus seven total, 226 and a half. We'll go around the table, give our best bets, then we'll do the cap on it. We, we're we are going to be heavy on one side and not heavy on the other. I'll go first because I actually have a play on the other game. Uh, I'm taking the Miami Heat on the money line versus the New York Knicks. I'm going to take I got them plus 150. It's plus 145. It's the best number showing right now. Uh, any number that you get this at, I'm comfortable with it. I will take the Miami Heat to win game five versus the New York Knickerbockers, who should not fucking be here, just so we're clear. We'll get into that more in a second. Uh, Jay, what are your bets for the Wednesday? Slide? Yeah, I just want to agree with you know, the Knicks should not be here, uh, but let's just put it that way. But uh, give me Warriors in the first half, minus four. Okay, Warriors my first half minus four. Sean, you got a similar play on this game? Apparently the Knicks didn't just dismantle the Cleveland Cavaliers on national TV every other night, but that's a we, we could talk about that another time. Warriors full game, minus six and a half, minus seven. There's still some six and a halves out there. I like it to minus seven. I'll take Golden State. I have a very specific play that I put in the app on uh, Monday night, which is I've got Lakers in five at a plus number and uh, Suns to win the series. So look, I like that, that combo play. I like the value on that. I don't necessarily love this spot for the Lakers, right? To the point where it's like, yeah, no, this is like a great one. I like that combo enough to play it. I wanted something to put with the Suns, essentially. Um, I am going to take the under 226. The market is finally like, all right, Fine, we'll move the total down after keeping this thing up at 227, 228. Now down at 226 and a half. Uh, I will play the under in this one because uh, it has been the go-to. And I'm going to tell Jay on the first half Warriors. So I'm taking basically, I have plays on Lakers for the full game, but you should ignore that. Warriors first half, I'm tailing Jay. And then the under 226 and a half. Um, we'll talk about the, the Heat next game. We'll go back to that one. But let's go ahead and start with this one since we, we all have plays on it. And it's the big one. A lot of narrative stuff at stake, right? 3-1 series, all the history and drama with that between these two players and Steph and, and LeBron. Um, you've got the Warriors, like I said, never lost the Western Conference playoff series. You've got the Lakers being an eight seed on the cusp of making the conference finals. You've got, like, you want to talk about the narrative stakes here? LeBron has an opportunity to knock out Steph to make sure that he doesn't get a fifth ring. And that sets up LeBron with an opportunity to once again pass Steph for rings. And it gets him one closer to the six to Ty Jordan, like a lot on the line in the, in the series uh, coming down the stretch after the Warriors take game four in a comeback effort behind Lonnie Walker, the fourth talk about an unsung hero coming up big in that game. Uh, I will go ahead and pull some trends, but Jay, give me your cap on why you like the Warriors in the first half. And then we'll talk about Sean about the full game. 
Yeah, I can't trust the Warriors here full game. I know it's a spot for them in theory. They're supposed to come back and win. Uh, like I said, that this series is going to go to exactly how Lakers-Grizzlies did, Lakers in six, but I'm I'm not so sure now. Obviously, the Lakers need some rest before the next series as well with this old team. The Warriors are seeming to run out of gas. I do expect them to come out and throw the first, first punch, just like they did um, really the last couple games. Uh, they kind of came out and thrown the first punch. So I do expect them to show up here first half, but over the course of the full game, I'm not so sure, man. They've been playing every other day they've not had two days off in this series and I said to myself especially who team which team was would that um hurt more it would be the Warriors the team that's coming off that game seven right a seven game series so with only one day of rest in between each one of these games I feel like the Warriors are, are starting to run out of gas here we kind of saw it um we saw it in game four uh versus the Lakers as well in LA so uh, even if they're at the house I don't want to lay the points with the Warriors full game I will take them in the first half um expect them to come out with some energy and effort uh with their backs against the wall but uh wouldn't be a bit surprised if the lakers went on ahead and ended this one um in five games but i did predict it happening in six but i'll take the warriors in the first half of this one minus four so here are the numbers and we'll get to sean's cap on the full game um this is team this is kind of i gotta go through this game five when you've lost the last two okay so you've 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 gone uh, oh, and two in the last two. You're at home for game five. So game five lost the last two. 47 and 19 straight up at 71%, 35 and 31 ATS at 53%. So pretty good number there in terms of winning the game outright. And as we all know, if you're a favorite and you win the game, which these almost all are favorites, you tend to cover in the playoffs the last three seasons. We talked about that over and over again on the podcast. That's a Matt Mitchell stat. Uh, it's at something like 80%. Um, for the first half, okay, so we got that's uh 66 games in that sample for game five, won the last two out of those 66, they have won the first half in 47. So it's 47 out of 66 have won the first half in that spot. So great first half spot, I think, you know, come out firing. And like, we've seen this last couple of games where like the Warriors are like, I have a lead and then they can't hold it down the stretch because like, honestly, I will say this, like Darvin Ham has acquitted himself very well. There's a lot of Lakers fans that have not liked Ham this season. And Kerr made, has made two drastic adjustments, both starting Jermichael Green and then starting Gary Payton and then like forcing them to shift things. And like, those were really good moves. Like Jay shaking his head. Those were good moves because it did force AD out of the action. But then like the Lakers found ways to counter. Like the Lakers have had more counters to the counters and they've done it in game, which is way harder than doing it in between games. I want to note this, like making those halftime adjustments and going to different guys in game that takes, honestly, it takes balls to do it. And then two, just being, having the wherewithal to figure out how to do, make these kind of reads, I think is really important here. Um, Sean, I will say this. So game five, lost the last two at home, you know, 39. Let's let's uh let's go back to the those numbers at home. Uh lost the last two at home for game five. 47 19. That's 71 percent, 53 percent ATS. Where this gets interesting is I looked at okay, what happens if you're down three one? It gets better. Uh 16 and four straight up 13 and seven at 65 percent against the spread so like i have lakers on this play because that, that's like a narrative like lebron beating them up 3-1 they've had all the answers those type of things but like from a trends perspective this is absolutely a warrior smash bot uh why do you like the full game number as opposed to jay's first half play yeah, I kind of fell in the trap of the first quarter play last time we were in this spot with the Warriors. They didn't come up, but then they ended up taking off and taking care of the game, full game. Yeah, the trend supported. It's a spot play combined with just what I've been seeing. I actually disagree with what Jay said about the the Golden State Warriors running out of gas. I think they're just struggling offensively to, to figure out what they have to do. The Lakers are, are, I believe, running out of gas in this spot. If you saw LeBron... He looked completely gassed even early in that game. I actually joked, maybe he shouldn't have got to the arena at 2 p.m. He should have got a couple extra hours of sleep and stayed off his feet because he looked tired, looked brutal early. 
in the three road losses uh, for the for the Lakers in this playoffs, they've lost by an average of 18 points per game. I, I think D'Lo was a zero. Poole was a zero for the Warriors. He's going to score 10 plus points at home. I'm very confident about that. And that might be what, what's necessary to get those guys over the top. The Lakers, to go back to, to the stamina and running out of gas, the Lakers were running out of gas in game one. They ended up holding it off and getting the W. Then Lonnie Walker, let's let's be honest with what happened. Lonnie Walker flat out saved the day yesterday. They were running out of gas. He came in and hit some big, big time jumpers in the fourth quarter to the point where they didn't know where to go. Anthony Davis wasn't demanding the ball. I don't know if that's him being tired or him just being Anthony Davis in some stretches, but they were going to Lonnie Walker and Lonnie Walker was answering the bell. This is a classic spot where the Lakers let up combined with from what I'm seeing of LeBron, LeBron getting a bit tired combined with this being a must win spot for the Warriors combined with the trends supporting uh, what goes on in these spots. I think the Warriors bounce back at home, double digit win. And then we get really spicy for game six back in Los Angeles. Another note here is maybe worth a look, not an official play for me. LeBron James under two and a half threes might be worth a look. I saw it as low as minus 140 at FanDuel. It's a bit expensive, but he's hit three threes in only two of the 10 playoff games. I also expect lower volume from him in this type of game, especially if it gets out of reach and he end up does getting a little more time on the bench to rest up. Uh, I don't see him taking eight, nine plus threes like he has been over a course of the last few games. Uh, that's worth a look, but full game, Warriors minus six and a half. This is, like you said, Matt, a smash spot for the Warriors. I, I don't... I don't see the Lakers coming out full throttle and being able to keep up the entire game. I like the Warriors here. All right, I want to ask about the LeBron prop. If he's if he's tired and the war and the Lakers are kind of in like a all right, we're not really going to put we're not going to put the pedal down here. It it is it, I know I already know what you're going to say, Matt. It is a good spot because when LeBron's tired and when he gets a little lazy, he just settles for perimeter yep. jump shots. No right. question about that. But he hasn't been hitting many, regardless if he's settling or not. I could see this game being a spot where LeBron gets 32, 33 type of minutes. It ends up being a game that's out of hand. And I don't want to say out of hand, but they know it's like, hey, let's go ahead and pack it up. We'll get to game six. I don't see him getting the volume. If he goes three for five, then pack it up. It's going to be an L all day. I don't see him getting seven, eight, nine attempts from three. Worth a look if you're looking for some some prop action. I'm going to stick with the full game. The Warriors minus six and a half, minus seven. Okay. Um. I'm on the under again. It's been hilarious that this number, like one, I, I have, I will say this, that if you have a read, if you have a read on a total play in a series, it, as long as you are adjusting to how teams adapt and the adjustments that they make, you're going to be in a really good spot to play it over and over and over again. Overs in, in, in Suns, Nuggets, unders in this series have been great for me in this, in these playoffs. Like it's been dynamite. Game five at home in a 3-1 series, the under is 23 and 18. So that's uh, 57%, okay? The biggest thing that I see from the Warriors, they keep reaching into the bag that they have gone to for the last nine seasons, looking for that magic that's always been there, and it's not there. Like, Clay Thompson is just not that guy. He's just, like... Clay is not that dude. Maybe he shows up in game six if they win this one, right? Maybe Clay game six shows up. Um, they can't play pool. Like Kerr finally gave up last night. And this this is a big key is that Kerr is not trying to out offense the Lakers. Kerr is trying to keep them within range and win the math game. Like if I can play enough defense, then we'll hit enough threes to win this series. I don't know if it's going to happen. It hasn't gone great so far. But like he he literally pulled pool. Like pool played 10 minutes last night. That's crazy. Like Jordan Poole makes a shit ton of money and he played 10 minutes in this game. Right. I think one of the adjustments that we could see, the Gary Payton move is really smart because it did two things. It made it harder um for them. Like they couldn't put Anthony Davis on Jamichael Green, right? Messed up that rotation. And he shut down D which forced Ham to go away from him, and we'll see if D'Lo plays. 
if if that goes again, which why would you change it? You had better success. Like you lost this game, but you had better success with Peyton. If that's the case, and Peyton's able to go, the health is he's got real banged up in that game. If he's able to go, and Ham has to say, I can't keep Russell out there. He's not doing anything offensively and defensively, he's a liability. You're taking another shooter off the floor for the Lakers. So this to me just leans a little bit more to the under. Um I just tend to think that these two teams are trying to absolutely grind it out. As much as they're playing transition, the two teams are good enough in transition defense to prevent it. AD is completely like the Warriors can't score inside. Can't do it. Can't score inside when AD is on the floor. Can't do it at all. They can't find anything. They can't space him out. They don't have the shooting. It's crazy because it's the Splash Brothers, but they don't have the shooting. Uh, Jay, I like the under again here. You have any thoughts on that? Yeah, if they start Gary Payton the second, once again, he's not an offensive player. He's all defense, right? So that's why I'm shaking my head because the Lakers have a lot more depth, a lot of more interchangeable players. What Warriors are doing, I mean, if they put Gary Payton in, then you're taking away from your offense. It's a big hit because you can sag off of him and have him shoot. I was playing basketball yesterday. I did the same thing. Oh, I'm living with this shot all day long. So, <laughs> it, he's it, with it, us. He's gonna, with us. Yeah. It's going to help their uh, defense tremendously, but it's really going to hurt their offense. Poole, he's in there. He's an offensive player. He can't play any defense. I'll tell you this right now. Steph, Seth, Cur uh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Jordan Poole are, are three horrible defenders. They're great on offense, but it's just as good as they're good on offense. That's how bad they are on defense, and it's an absolute liability for the team. I'm putting them in the pick and roll every single time. So starting Gary Payton second, I told myself yesterday, that's a total underplay right there. He helps. He's going to – um help the defense tremendously it's going to hurt the offense uh tremendously tremendously as well so uh, as long as he's starting i'd love the under here it's a shame that we say that about clay thompson now because he was for me the best on ball defender in the nba before yeah. the the lower body gave out on him in a couple different spots so yeah that is a shame uh i can't i, I can't disagree with you on that uh that aspect jay i think this just feels like deja vu this is the exact same series for the lakers as it was um for the Golden or for the Memphis Grizzlies. They win game one, lose game two, win three and four, five. They they essentially take off. They lose on the road. They go back to LA and absolutely take care of business. I believe this is going to be uh the exact same sequence for the Los Angeles Lakers. They'll take care of business in game six. And um I, I tweeted out, then I gotta worry about LeBron getting ring five. And my my Jordan is the GOAT take is 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 taking on a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 getting uglier and uglier though. But we'll see. I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, it looks very it looks very deja vuish. The 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 same exact. There's a thing about LeBron when he knows that he. I think he's figured out what he has to do to beat the Warriors right now. So he's not really pressed about it. Same way he felt about Memphis. It's like yeah. I know what we got to do here. Let me go ahead. Oh, this game's out of hand. Let's get some rest. We'll get back home, and then we'll beat these dudes by 40, and that's what we'll do. I'm not saying that's going to happen in Golden State, but he is not pressed or worried about the Golden State Warriors as they are constructed right now. I, I think the Golden State Warriors are going to come out, get the W, and then we go back to L.A., and it's a it's a fold them up, pack them up. Let's, let's get to the conference finals. He's got to love this shit, man. He's got to, like, some. he's never going to show it, but some part of it is going to be like, oh, is it? Is it hard when you don't have the super team? Oh, yeah. when when you don't have when when Sean Livingston isn't your your fourth best player? Is that is that tough for you? Oh, when all the threes <laughs> aren't going in? Oh, you have to you actually have to like win a normal basketball game. That's rough. For, no Kevin Durant to save you. Oh, that's a shame. Like LeBron's got to be just like loving the fact that he's like. Oh, you see how hard it is when you get a fucking drag a team with a bunch of with a bunch of guys that can't hit any shots. You see how hard that is. Try doing it with J.R. Smith stepping. So yeah, yeah. Uh, hundred percent. Good times. Um, in the other series, so we just talked about how this is like a great spot for the team down three one, and it's awesome. And like you know the home 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 team and all blah blah blah. I don't care. I'm I am throwing look, trends are great to support your position. But I'm just like, look, I actually do believe in trends. And I do believe that they should warn you off certain spots. Doesn't feel the same though. The Knicks know the jig is up. That's that is what game four was, was the Knicks were like, they hung with it. Cause like they were there in that game. It's not like they were, they got blown out. Right. This is going to sound weird. I'm serious. If the Knicks got blown out, it'd be better. It'd be like, all right, look, 
We lost the two in Miami. We had chances in game three. Nothing nothing worked in game, in game four. That's not who we are. Let's come back in game five and get a win and get back in this series. But that's not what happened is they were just like, they just, they just couldn't do it. Like you, you get it to six, the heat push it back to 10. You get it back to six, they push it back to eight. You get it back down to five, they push it back to eight. Like over and over and over again. Uh, this team should not be here. Like they just shouldn't be here. And that's fine. That That is, it is a huge indictment on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, Anything you want to say about how much worse? It's not that the wrong team won. That's not how it is. the The Cavs are are, are fraud jokes. Like I'm willing to pile as much as we can on the Cleveland Cavaliers here. The Knicks should not be here. They are not in this caliber. The Heat, despite being the eighth seed, do look like they belong here. Uh, this we are once again seeing. You know, I was on Knicks pre series until Brandon Anderson was like. This is Tom Thibodeau versus Eric Spolstra. And I was like, fuck. And like, it's exactly what's happened. This is, again, congratulations to J.B. Bickerstaff for being out coached by Tom Thibodeau. Just amazing stuff, J.B. The Knicks are not, are, are, it's fine. The Knicks had a really good season. They finished the number two offense. They had a 50 win pace after All-Star. Good season. They are not here. And that's okay. They have time. They can add some more pieces, do whatever and get here. But in a game where RJ Barrett played well, he still lost his minutes and the 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 Knicks never really lost, had a chance, Sean. So, I think the Heat get them up out of here in game 5. Yeah, it's going to be tough. The 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 I think them not deserving to be here is tough because I do think they're the fifth best team in the East, right? And that's exactly where if they get eliminated in this spot, that's where they'll be, that's where they'll end the season and I think they they earn that fifth slot, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, I mean, the just to support some of the things you laid out, Matt. Shout out IQ for three on Twitter. He laid this out. Listen to this Knicks stretch uh, to end the third quarter. Six fifty two left. Knicks cut the lead to two. They give up a Heat three bang. They're right back down five. Five fifty seven. Knicks cut the lead to three. Heat hit a three back to six. Three oh nine in the third quarter. Knicks cut the lead to five. Come down, bang. Heat hit a three. They're down eight. 157 left in the third quarter. Knicks cut the lead to four. Heat hit a three. Bang. They're right down seven. I actually tweeted the Knicks were down a vast majority of this game in single digits, and it felt like a 20-point game. There was never, ever, ever, ever a moment in that game where I was like, the Knicks have a real shot to come back and win this game. Uh, the jig may be up. This is too tall of a task The from Spo to – to Jimmy Butler, to the ball movement of the Miami Heat. They they continue to move the rock until they get a clean look. And the perimeter defense from the Knicks has been very poor. So, um, yeah, I think this 3-1 hole is going to be too tough to climb out of. Jay, what do you think? Still don't want to bet against the Knicks here. Um, I mean, I'll agree they're 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 cooked. I still think there were some foul calls that went the other way, some fops by Lowry um that should not have been called, in my opinion. I really think they kind of changed the game. I'm not saying that it's on the refs, but um, if a few of those plays cal- or Lowry doesn't get the foul call and it goes the other way, I think they could have been a lot closer game. Obviously, I expect the Knicks to get a little bit more calls in this one, but I mean they just hadn't figured out the heat defense. But I mean, they, they shouldn't be playing this this uh bad versus uh eight seed team that's very banged up. I mean, Jimmy Butler's banged up. Caleb Martin's banged up as well. You got Kevin Love out here balling on you, which you should be going at him every single time on the pick and roll. Ben Matabayo is banged up here. So um, there's just there's no excuse for the Knicks to be who are a hustle team to be getting out hustled by a very injured Heat team there, man. So it's just it's it's inexplicable in my opinion. They should be playing a lot better in this. Personally, I do expect them to go home game five and at least get one more win. I do expect them to keep fighting, but um, they're going to have to keep grinding. I mean, you can't give up here, and you have to keep playing defense as well, try to move the ball up the pace as well. Um, I st- I mean, I don't think they're going to come back in this series, but I personally, I'd either bet the Knicks in game five or I'd just stay off the game. The rebounding thing has been big. The, the Heat have been beating the Knicks on the glass. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen at the Garden back there. Uh, we met, I mentioned before, right before we hopped on and went live, that the atmosphere in the garden is going to be very interesting because I believe the Knicks fans are now a little bit down overall with the performance and, and the effort. The effort is the key, man. I don't think Knicks fans even care if you play good ball. They just want to see you play hard and try. That's the biggest thing. Like one, one of my favorite Bulls of all time is Joe Kim Noah. 
Joe Kim Noah had absolutely zero basketball talent at all. He had z- n- no basketball IQ, not, not IQ. He had very high basketball IQ, but when it came to basketball skill, it was very low. But man, did he play his ass off every single night, every single possession. And the Bulls fans love him for that. That's the the, the same type of attitude they have around uh, New York and around the New York Knicks. If they uh, they weren't happy about the effort, and I'm wondering how that's going to affect the atmosphere, especially early in the garden. Like, uh, I'm with Jay. I wouldn't – I'd have to lay off this game. Uh, I, I, it's, it's either Knicks or nothing. The, the They have been a really good first-half team all year, the best first-half team in the regular season this year against the spread. That, that minus two, two-and-a-half number I've seen is, is interesting, but – this feels a little different. They're going to have to come out early. And if they don't, I'm worried about how the atmosphere and the support from the crowd is going to affect the Knicks overall. And that worries me a touch. Two points. One, Joe Kim Noah got a top five MVP finish. Oh, Joe three. Kim Noah. Hey, listen, hold on. I, I don't want let's, that to, I don't want that to, let's, to, to let's, sound. let's go back. I just saying you need to revise your take on no basketball talent. Dude was an incredible passer. He wasn't a no. shooter, but what? amazing okay. player. No, I, listen, Matt, I watched him every night play point guard for the Chicago Bulls when he was first team all NBA. Yeah. He I like there, there's no question, but that was something like like overall natural talent. He didn't have any. He was a big guy that ran the floor and block shots in Florida and he got to the league yeah. and he was like that for years. And then he got put in Thibodeau put him in a spot where you looks like you're gonna have to run point guard for us. And he was able to do that. But that was all through hard work and grinding it out day yeah. to day. The, the, there's, it's never going to be like, hey, Joe Kim Noah was born with all this natural basketball talent. That just wasn't the case. But that also like that also like translates, which is like your point about like we just want to see you try. Yeah, this is the thing. The Tibbs teams always have an advantage in a regular season because of how hard they try, and then you get to the playoffs and they don't have another level. Like again, this is why they shouldn't be here. The Cavs should have matched that that should have matched that aggressiveness. That's what's frustrating for me. Is like. The Knicks, like, of course the Knicks are getting beat now. They're facing a team that also gives a level, requisite level of effort. Like, I'm sorry. You're like, right. oh, we're going to beat you on the offensive glass. It's the playoffs. Go get a fucking board. But regardless, uh, Jay, I want to ask you, because you like you were kind of like in the middle. Are you going to, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Are you going to bet the Heat in game five or the Knicks in game five? I would take them first half. To be honest with you, Will I'm you? not gonna bet the game. Yeah, I'm not gonna bet the game. I don't have to. I don't force bets, but um, okay. I would take Knicks first quarter. For I mean, I when the first quarter's been kind of kicking me in the butt, but I I would take Knicks first quarter first half, and um, I wouldn't bet against some full game. I feel like obviously this is the the throw to this is the kitchen sink spot right here. Yeah, I, I just don't really see them giving up on effort or as far as just like not caring about the game at the house. Game six, they could get blown out by 20 points. But um, I do think the Knicks have at least one more win in them. Um, that's just yeah, what it's, I feel. It's an interesting question of like whether of like how how Miami approaches this, right? Because they are banged up and all these kind of things. Which is Miami. I don't know that Miami doesn't go for the kill here. They feel like a team that actually does do that. Versus, like, I agree with Sean that, like, the Lakers are much more likely to be like, oh, wow, you came out and hit a bunch of shots. Oh, we're going to have to go back home and, and win. Oh, no. But, like, the Heat feel like much more of a, uh, let's beat these guys, get them up out of here, and then we can rest while the other series finishes up. So we'll see how it goes. That's going to do it for Buckets. You can follow Jay on Twitter at JMoneyIsMoney. You can follow Sean on Twitter at ChicagoFlow. I'm at HP Basketball. Our thanks to David Payne, our producer. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Best Bets episode for the Thursday slate. Until then, let's get buckets. 